stories about black history, 10 things your child should know, and computer science courses, all things you can learn more about on blackineducation.com. On Saturday, the 8th of February, I went to Washington Depot at 1 o'clock, waited until 2, and purchased a ticket to go to and return. I left the office and started to go to the car. On the platform, there was a man who said, take the rear car. I made no reply, but went in and took my seat in what they called the white people's car. The cars left here at 2 o'clock, and I was about to return in a 3 o'clock train from Alexandria. On entering the car there, the policeman hailed me, and allude me to go into the Ford car. I replied, this car will do. With that, I entered the car and got inside of the door. When the policeman ran up and told me I could not ride in that car. I told him I came down in that car and in that car I intended to return. That I had my ticket, a return ticket, which I had bought in Washington and I was going back in the same car. He said I could not go. I asked him why, as I had paid my fare and had come down in the same car. He said that car was for ladies. I told him then that was the very car I wanted to go in, and I had come down in it. He said no damn nigger was allowed to ride in that car anyhow, never was and never would be. With that, he seized me and tried to eject me. I had gotten inside the door and was holding onto the door with my left arm, with my right hand holding onto the bars, and then I had my left foot in the seat. He said, ain't you coming out of this car? I said, never. I bought my ticket to go to Washington in this car, and I'm going in it. Before I leave this car, I will suffer death. He had on his badge special policeman of the Washington, Georgetown, and Alexandria Railroad. He said he had been given instructions by the company to eject any nigger that entered the car. Instructed by whom? The company. He had been instructed not to let any nigger go in that car. That car was for ladies. And he again took hold of me. I told him to let me go. I had come respectably from Washington and was on my return, as I had business to do at the Capitol. I expected to return at 3 o'clock and have time enough to arrange my room in the building, as it was not known that I was absent. He then went behind me and wrung my hands on the iron. He doubled up his fists and struck me all across my knuckles. I had such a clench that he could not get my hands off. He battered my knuckles and got my left arm twisted all the way around and trying to get it off the door. I was determined not to leave the car because I had paid my fare, and the other car was all filthy and dirty, containing nothing but men. He twisted my arm until he hit my shoulder so that I had to let go with the left hand. After letting go of that, I caught with my other hand the iron railings. He went around and unclenched my fingers and then struck me in the back. I took hold of the door again with both hands. Then he said if I did not let go, he would beat me so bad that I would not be able to stand. I told him he might do it, I would not go out. I had made up my mind not to leave the car unless they brought me off dead. Then after releasing my hands, he got in front of me and took me by the collar of my coat, which I had buttoned, and dragged me and tried to jerk me out. I tried to make him let me go by holding around the railings, and then he beat part of my hand that had hold of the railings. I had such a terrible wrestle with him for about six minutes that he stepped out of the platform and said, Sheriff, there was a tall man there with light clothes on. I demand you as an officer of this railroad to arrest this woman. Then this another man came up. I was so exhausted I could scarcely talk. I commenced to cry. The officer had hurt me so bad, and my arms and limbs were paining me so. Said I, are you the sheriff? Said he, yes. Said I, what are you going to arrest me for? What have I done? Have I committed robbery? Have I murdered anybody? He said that niggers were not allowed to ride in those cars. It was the rules of the company, and he was bound to enforce them. This was the would-be sheriff. I have heard since that he was no sheriff. With that, he took hold of me right here, around the neck, and tried to drag me out. And then, and then both men succeeded in getting me out of the platform. At length, this policeman, who stood beside me, kicked me right on the foot. And the man who was in front of me was pulling me while the other was pushing me off. But I still held on to the iron railings. Then one of these men went around the iron railing and took hold of my arms and my dress and coat and pulled me. And the both of them succeeded in dragging me down the platform a step, then two steps, and then onto the bricks. They dragged me a little distance and injured my hip. There were two or three of his associates, I suppose, standing around who looked at each other and grimaced and had a time. 
I then looked up and saw a gentleman. I do not know his name, but I know he is a clerk in Mr. Fincendon's committee on public buildings and grounds. He stepped up and asked me what the matter was. He had seen part of the occurrence. I told him I was afraid to go to Washington in that car because there were disorderly persons in them and that that man had threatened my life and I was afraid to move. He said he would go with me in a car and see that nobody injured me and then I went in the car with him. The man that put me off said particularly that it was the orders of the company and he was going to enforce them if it cost him his life. These two men abused me in such a way. I suppose 11 minutes altogether. I've been told there were three of them, but I only remember two. I was very much prostrate after it. Were you seriously injured by these men in getting off? I had a hemorrhage that I shall never get over, and I've had two hemorrhages since. And my whole body from head down to my toes has been very sore, especially my breast and my hip, that I could not cough without great pain. I could not put my foot to the ground to walk. It almost takes my breath. Then my wrist was very much injured. I thought it was broken by being twisted off the iron railing so as to turn my whole arm around. Where were the hemorrhages of which you speak located? I do not know. The lungs? I think so. I have spit blood several times since and it has left me very prostrate. My breast has been very sore ever since. My nose and my eyes were dreadful. This man struck me in my left eye, and my left eye gathered, and I have had that eye water applied every day. My eyes are well now. The left eye was black all the way around and swollen to the top. I had to have a poultice on my eye for four nights in succession. You speak of your hip being injured. How did that occur? From the dragging. Two men dragging me from the car. They twisted my feet. They did everything to me they could do. I declare they could not have treated a dog worse than they treated me. It was nothing but damned nigger and cursing and swearing all the time. You speak of their having kicked you. What part of your person did they kick? One of these fellows was dragging me by the collar while the other one stood on the platform kicking me off. He took his knee so as to get my hand away from the iron. He kicked me on the foot. State whether you have been confined to your room or bed or either during the period which has intervened. And if so, during what period of time? I have been in this bed on my back since the 8th of February. I came home on that day and my sister undressed me and put me to bed. The doctor dressed my arm and I have been here ever since. A part of that time not able to hold up my head. My sister has been up with me night after night. These men pushed me against the door and against the platform and I feel very sore, especially in my back and hip. State what part of the time you have been under the doctor's charge. Every day and twice a day until a day or two, he is watching the hemorrhage. State whether he has been administering medicine internally. I have taken any quantity of medicine. I've taken two bottles of different moistures and two or three different kinds of things, powders, pills, and liniments. I've had two bottles of different kinds of liniments, one for my arm and one for my whole body. State the doctor's name and where he resides. Dr. Augusta, he resides on 14th Street between L and M. On the east side, the number I do not know. Has the company or any person professing to be an officer of the company offered you any reparation? Yes, sir, but not directly. My brother-in-law is very well acquainted with Mr. Stewart, who I believe is secretary of the company. Has any other person professing to be connected with the road offered you any reparation? No, sir. Do you know whether this man who ejected you from the car remained on the train on its way up or not? I do not. Did you see the conductor of the train during this time? Yes, sir. He was on the spot, a witness to the transaction. Did he do or say anything? Not to me, but he asked to others. I can bring three or four that he has ejected or tried to eject from the cars. Do you know the conductor's name? I've got it down. I think it is Mitchell. Do you know the name of the policeman who ejected you from the car? Yes, sir but I cannot think of it at present. I noticed his badge particularly and read the inscription upon it. Has the company or any person purporting to be an officer of the company paid you anything? Not at all. I'm under heavy expense, keeping up two rooms and not making anything. I shall have to get up to my work as soon as possible if I have to go on crutches. Kate Brown was an employee at the United States Capitol in 1868. 
She was responsible for managing the ladies' retiring room at the U.S. Senate. This event happened to her on February 8, 1868, and given her employment at the U.S. Capitol, many senators knew of it and were upset over her hurt. There are so many people we don't know who paved the way for equal treatment in this country. We should remember their names. The Senate authorized an investigation into what happened to Catherine Brown, and while it did not produce any action against the company, Catherine Brown did sue the railroad company in court. She won an award of $1,500, but the company appealed the decision to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled in Mrs. Brown's favor, and the lower court's decision was upheld some five and a half years later. <laughs>